What's going on guys? It's Michael and welcome to part two of my April catch-up. Last part I covered three movies and at this part I'll be doing the same with three other movies and these movies will include Bo is Afraid, Evil Dead Rise, and Sisu, Sisu, or however you say it. Well, without any further ado, let's get started. The first movie I want to talk about is a little movie by A24 and it's called Bo is Afraid. This is directed by Ari Aster, the same guy who gave us movies like Hereditary and Midsommar. And it follows a guy named Bo, played by Walking Phoenix. He's a very anxious dude, and after finding out the news about his mother's passing, he must make an epic journey all the way back home in time for his mother's funeral. It's a straightforward plot, but with this being an Ari Aster movie, you could expect his own insane twist on things. Don't have the trailer fool you. Uh, the trailer makes it look like it's a... Uh, goofy comedy about this guy just trying to get back home. Yes, there are some funny moments, but there are quite a bit of moments in here that are just downright horrific. On one hand, it's a comedy, and on the other hand, it's a drama, and then the other side, it is just a straight up horror movie. And I don't mean like horror jump scares or anything, I mean like psychological horror, just straight up dread. And that could be a lot to take in for people, so if you weren't fond of Ari Aster's previous two movies, just skip this one entirely, that's not even a question. But for those that have enjoyed his previous two movies, I think this is well worth a watch. There's a lot of creative sequences in here. Not all of it works, there's definitely a few things in here that I would have trimmed down a little bit, especially with this thing being three hours long. Some scenes could have been trimmed down to like maybe like 15, 20 minutes or whatever, but for the most part, this is an insane ride. Walking Phoenix is phenomenal as Bo. I think this may be one of my favorite performances for him from him. He just he just really sells the anxious side of his character. And I really enjoy the journey that he went through despite it being very bizarre, especially toward the end, but that's a little more spoiler territory. And it's just one of those movies that sticks with you. I remember watching this movie a couple weeks ago with, with a friend of mine. And we were just in silence for like at least two to three minutes after it was over. And then we turned to each other and we were just discussing the movie and what our own interpretation of it was. Like either good or bad, depending on what you feel about the movie overall, since I think this is gonna be a very divisive one. Either way, it's gonna stick with you, especially after watching the movie and even two weeks after seeing it, I still think about it from time to time. With all that said, it's not for everybody and I could definitely see this upsetting some people with just its dark themes and its very long runtime. It's not gonna be for everybody, but for those who are fans of Ari Aster's previous two movies and just wanna see something unique from A24, I'd say this is well worth the watch. And with that being said, I'm gonna be giving Bo is Afraid an A minus. Next movie I wanna talk about is a little more upbeat, but still pretty scary. Evil Dead Rise. This is the fifth film in the Evil Dead franchise as we follow two sisters, one of them being a mother of three kids, as they try to as they try to get along, but eventually things go south when one of the kids gets a gets a haunted book essentially, and after that a bunch of crazy shenanigans happen. If you've seen the Evil Dead movies, you know exactly what to expect. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not too big into the Evil Dead franchise or anything, but I have seen Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. Both of those movies are magnificent. I think they are the funniest horror movies ever made. I love the campiness aspect while also giving the horror aspect as well. I think both aspects match very well together. And I was really looking forward to seeing Evil Dead Rise. It definitely looked like it was leaning more towards the horror side along with some of the more campier elements. And the thing I really liked about this one is that it mainly takes place in one location. It takes place in an apartment building. That's where all the action happens, and I thought that was really neat. Um, you don't really see a whole lot of movies today that take place in just one location primarily, and I think the director and everyone involved pull it off very well. Um, it's not perfect by any means. I think there's definitely, I think the characters in here, I think they could have uh, they could have used some more development, and one of the characters in here, one of the kids makes some, like, some dumb decisions, but you know what? I'm gonna forgive that, that's okay. It's, it's a horror movie and it's an excuse to give us all the crazy, insane action that the Evil Dead franchise is usually known for. Over the top horror and campiness, uh, that's kind of what the Evil Dead franchise is known for. If you're squirmish around blood, don't see this. Um, 
I mean, for those who are fans of the Evil Dead franchise, that's to be expected. There are a lot of, like, scary elements in here, a lot of horror, and there's also a lot of, like, fun, campier moments in here, too. Kind of similar to the previous films in the franchise, they're able to mash those two elements together. And for fans of the franchise, I think this is going to be a very solid watch through and through. Without giving anything away, this movie has the hardest opening sequence of a horror movie I've seen in a long time. Once you know, you know. Like, after the opening sequence happened, I'm just like, I'm all in. It's, it's perfect, it sells the movie very well, and fits the tone for the rest of the movie going forward. So yeah, Evil Dead Rise. I would highly recommend it for those who are fans of the Evil Dead franchise. And with that being said, I'm going to be giving this movie a B+. The last movie I want to touch upon is a little movie called Sisu, or Sisu, however you say it. This is an action thriller set during World War II, as we follow this guy trying to look for some gold while a bunch of Nazis are trying to get to him. Think of it as John Wick meets Rambo set in World War II. That is Sisu. So for those who go to Regal Cinemas, they do this thing every month called Monday Mystery Movie. Basically, tickets are only five bucks. You go into the movie theater, but here's the catch. You don't know what movie it's going to be until it actually starts. So for those of you who go to Regal Cinemas, they do this thing every month called Monday Mystery Movie. You go into the movie theater, tickets are only five bucks. The catch is though, you don't know what the movie is going to be until it actually starts. And this was one of those movies. I kind of had a feeling it'd be Sisu, but I also thought it could have been something else as well. Uh, there are endless possibilities when it comes to these mystery movies. I'm not sponsored by Regal, this is just how it usually is. And I just remember being in the theater, seeing this, and when the title card came up, Sisu, people were just like, yeah, Sisu, because this is one of those movies that I didn't know existed until last month. I remember seeing a trailer for this before John Wick Chapter 4, and I'm just like, oh man, this looks absolutely insane. I mean, it's just about this guy just killing a bunch of Nazis in insane ways. It's very over the top and after watching that trailer i'm just like okay i'm in this looks this looks like a lot of fun and man after seeing the movie i gotta tell you sisu is awesome it is an hour and a half of this guy killing a bunch of nazis and there's a bunch of crazy action sequences throughout and it is so entertaining it doesn't overstate its welcome like i said only an hour and a half half not too short not too long just right in the middle, which a lot of movies don't really seem to do nowadays. A lot of movies seem to be like two and a half hours, two hours, that kind of thing, which is okay. If a movie needs to be that long, it needs to be. But I mean, sometimes it's just nice to have a nice hour and a half movie that doesn't overstay its welcome. And you could just get out of it and just be like, man, I had a great time. And this is Sisu for you. My audience went nuts during this movie, especially during the over-the-top action sequences. Just, this guy is essentially invincible. He's like, like I said, Rambo meets John Wick. Like, he does not stop whatsoever. And I really enjoyed the World War II setting as well. I love when movies go into that setting, even though it can get a little bit repetitive at times, especially with video games. I think the setting here fit the movie very well. It's an absolute must-watch for fans of the action genre, especially John Wick. If you love John Wick, I think you're going to love Sisu. There is a lot to enjoy here for action fans, so this movie gets a thumbs up for me. And with all that said, I'm going to be giving Sisu an A-. So those are my thoughts on those three movies. Let me know what you guys thought of them in the comments below. And I will see you all on the next one.